If you look at the definition of the public sector uh, in the IMF GFS uh, standards, the public sector includes, of course, financial public enterprises, non-financial public enterprises, and what is called general government. And then general government is in turn divided between subnational governments and central government. When we're looking at extra budgetary operations, we mean extra budgetary operations of the central government. So this is not to do with public sector enterprises. It's not to do with subnational governments, which can be very relevant for the public sector as a whole. This is about those bits of central government spending that are not managed through the central budget. We're looking at general government as a whole, so subnational and central, and we're also looking at non-financial and financial public center enterprise. Usually, fiscal risk management would consist of a set of procedures. So it's not, it's not an ad hoc management process. The idea is it should be a set of formal procedures which are embedded in the practices of the uh, government that we're looking at in order to, to manage this. Okay, so fiscal risk management implies a set of procedures. Okay, so you're in the central government, you provide a guarantee to a, a local government or perhaps a parastatal, and the, 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 the problem is a debt default. So the type of, so, so debt default would be, again, quite a common one, and, and debt default at another level of government. So just like I was talking earlier about, you know, the structure of the central government, it could be that the central government has a contingent liability because the subnational government defaults on a loan or because a parastatal defaults on a loan. So insurance, pension obligations, debt default is very common. There is one missing here, uh, which is the issue of what people call quasi-fiscal operations. For me, a quasi-fiscal operation, a public-private partnership would be a, a, a typical one, where effectively you've committed to repay the private uh, investor through uh, the earnings that they should be able to make from the, from the facility, you know, whether it's a port or a road or a, or, or a hospital. Um, but if you've not calculated properly uh, when and uh, how much money will come in to the port or the road or the hospital, then you've created an obligation on government. That that's a classic quasi-fiscal uh, obligation. Under Dimension 1, we're talking about uh, autonomous government agencies, public enterprises. So are they receiving uh, financial statements? Are they also receiving, in addition to that, audited uh, end-of-year reports? One of the significant problems in, in a lot of governments, including Mozambique, for example, is that they do receive audited end-of-year reports from all of their public enterprises, and they receive financial statements from most of their uh, autonomous government agencies but they don't examine those and consolidate them into one report which, which assesses fiscal risk. So as assessors, what we do is ask, do we have a monitoring process in place that seems to be reasonably robust? Are there indications of big weaknesses or big gaps in that monitoring progress? If so, we might still score it relatively well. You know, it might still be a C or a B, but we would put you know, a big uh, warning in the assessment report that we have doubts over the substance and we recommend you know, a detailed uh, audit or a detailed uh, review in the future. We do need to recognize that some indicators will be influenced by the performance of the subnational government, but a significant number will be totally determined by the legislation or by the procedures imposed by the national government. And there's no point in going to every single government and assessing uh, for example, the quality of external audit, if the quality of external audit is always going to be the same because it's determined outside of the framework of subnational government. So what you might actually do once you make this division is end up with an even more abridged version. So you might go to you know, just one or two uh, subnational governments and apply the full set of indicators, and then you take an even smaller set which you apply more broadly. Um, one of the problems with the PEFRA is it does take time and it takes resources. And the more abridging that you can do, the better coverage you can get, and the more agile you can be. Uh, uh, my sense is that in order for PEFRAs to be useful for national governments as a method of monitoring, they need to be more agile. You need to get your information in more quickly so that you can start 
negotiating with your subnational government about what to improve. I mean, when we look at it in detail, it's, it's not so complicated. Uh, there are various elements to it, uh, but what, so long as one has in one's mind exactly you know, what is a personal database, what is a payroll, what is an establishment roster, what do we include in the budget, then, then the rest of it is, is relatively straightforward.